Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at Grindhouse. Now before I go any further, I do want to warn you this game is definitely not for kids as you can probably tell by the box cover. It's rated on the back of the box as 14 plus and I would agree with that. It does have some depictions of graphic violence although in a very cartoony way. The text on the cards can be a little horrific but they're appropriate for this type of narrative horror game based on the idea of low budget horror and splatter films. So you and a group of people have been invited to a mysterious party and offer 10 million dollars to the survivor. You're given a persona card to play with some special abilities and a secret way to score points. After surviving five rooms, the player with the most points will win the game and receive the $10 million. If you are killed during the game, you come back as a ghost to haunt the survivors, but you can still share in the victory. Unfortunately, it's going to be your next of kin getting the $10 million surprise. Now, I like a lot of horror games, and this cover really caught my eye, so I was eager to get this one to the table. So, will this be the big next big summer hit, or will it be relegated to a forgotten Betamax flop? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, then we'll come back for my final thoughts on Grindhouse. First, place the playmat in the middle of the table, and shuffle all the deck cards. Now the room cards should only be shuffled the first time you play the game, and should be left in the order so you get the experience of going through all the cards before you reshuffle as you play the game. Next, deal out four normal room cards to the four positions, and then one final room which has a red border, face down to the last spot. Deal each player two items, and then each player will secretly take one card and discard the other one. Then, each player gets two Persona cards. Again, pick one and discard the other. Give each player their desired player sheet with their matching body part tokens along with one die. Each player will roll a die, and the player who rolls the highest is the first player. Now before we get into gameplay, let's have a quick look at the components. Each player has a hero board and damaged body parts. When a card or action tells a player to take a wound, the player can choose which body part to wound by placing the wounded side of the token on it. If there is ever a second wound to the same body part, that body part is severed and cannot take any more wounds. If an action or card tells you to take a wound on a specific body part, then you must damage that body part. If it is already severed, then the player must take the wound in either the torso or the head. If the torso or head ever receive two wounds, the character has died and becomes a ghost. As a ghost, the character can do other actions on their turn and has alternate winning conditions which are outlined on your Persona card. Each Persona card should be kept secret, but it will give you a brief background for your character and a special ability. It will outline how and when you can use this ability. If you die during the game and become a ghost, immediately reveal your Persona card and read the bottom part of your Persona card. You can perform this special ghost action whenever a room is resolved, including the one you just died in. Your item card will tell you what it can be used for and when it can be used. Keep them secret until played, and you can carry as many items as you want. The room cards tell the story of the host macabre and gruesome games. There is some terminology in the card and is outlined in the book, so I'm not going to go through the items such as survivors versus players, wounds versus limbs, etc. You can read it for yourself in the rulebook. The game is played over five rounds, which are represented by the rooms. Four normal rooms and a final room. The first player will draw the room card and read it aloud to all the players. If there is a big red stop, do not read past this line until a decision has been made, usually asking for a volunteer, which the party can decide however they want to approach volunteering. Once that is done, proceed with the rest of the card. Once all the requirements from the card have been completed, the players who are ghosts can now perform their ghost action. And finally, the first player token moves to the next player. During the final room, all the details for the outcome are written on the card and operate just like any other room, except when the room is resolved, the ghosts do not get to perform their action one last time. If there are any survivors after the final room, we go to scoring. If at any point during the previous five rooms all the party is dead, the game ends immediately and nobody wins. For scoring, survivors will tally up the points based on the remaining body parts. A healthy body part is worth two points, a wounded part is worth one point, but a severed body part is worth no points. All survivors add up their points, then reveal their persona cards and add any points from there, and the survivor with the most points is the winner. Ghosts will also check their winning conditions, and if they complete their ghost objective, they will also win. And that's how you play. Now let's get back to see what I thought about Grindhouse. First, theme and components. The theme of this game works extremely well. It's a very simple game, but one is that is thematic from start to finish. Everything in the box fits the theme to a T, so top quality there. As for the components, again, very high quality. From the box, to the playmat, to the cards, to the dice, to the player boards, all really well done. And the art on the player boards is just the right tone of gruesome cartooniness. The playmat is a nice neoprene mat. The cards are, are decent quality, 
and the text on the cards is very clear in what they do. Now there are 71 room cards in the base set and you're only going to be using a maximum of 5 per game. So I feel that there's a fair bit of replayability there and there's actually a Krampus expansion in the box which adds more cards. The dice are nice and chunky and thematic as well, but they're maybe not the easiest to read, especially when someone else is on the opposite side of the table. The player boards and wound tokens are also very well done and good quality. Overall, high marks for the components. So we go on to the gameplay. Well, as you saw from the walkthrough, there really isn't much gameplay. You're just turning over a card, reading, then follow the instructions. Now, there is a fair bit of discussion amongst the players on who, gets, uh, who volunteers or gets voluntold. There's a fairly lengthy section in the rules on how you can have the discussion. The democratic, where everyone gets to discuss pros and cons and finally vote. This allows you to really role play your character and persona card the most. And if your group is up for that, that's the way I recommend playing this game. If you have a persona card that wants to keep someone alive because you're married to them or even dead, the democratic method really allows you some more maneuverability. But the other methods work as well. You know, the first player picks, again, can allow for some role playing of your persona card and it can result in some very vengeful ghosts. Now, the ones that I use the most, if there is no volunteer, was actually just to roll a die. The lowest roll, volunteers. This last method really speeds up the game as well. Now, even with that, I do like that you don't always know what the outcome of volunteering was going to be good or bad. If you volunteer, it might be that you are the one who is saved, as opposed to killed. You just never know. Every outcome is random, and you're either going to like that or hate that. But you just kind of have to get in the spirit of the game and get it, go along with it. I also like that even if you died, you got ghost actions. You can still win the game as a ghost. And the game is short enough that I don't think I ever played this game just once. We'd finished it, then start another one right away. And the game is fast. The box is 20 to 30 minutes, and I've always found it played definitely in the lower regions of that, like 15 to 20 minutes, as it really depends on how much discussion over the volunteering you have amongst uh, your players, and also the player count. In this game, definitely the higher player count is usually better. But it still works as a three-player game. So, would I recommend this game? As a game? No, I don't think I would. As an activity for the right group of people? Oh yeah, I would. I really like the theme and components. Top notch all around. I like the persona cards that allowed you, but didn't require you to roleplay your character. I like the ghost abilities and that you still had a chance to win even if you died. I like that it was fast enough that we could easily run through the game a couple times. I like the variety contained in the box. It still will take many, many plays before you see a repeated room. But I know this game is definitely not going to appeal to everyone. The theme will definitely put some people off. I know that the lack of gameplay will really definitely not be to everyone's taste. And if your group doesn't get into the spirit of the game, it's going to fall flat. Or if your game just doesn't like the sheer randomness for the style of game. For me though, with the people I played it with, we really, really enjoyed it. So I'm going to give this game a 7 out of 10 and give it the Dice Tower seal of approval for the right group of people and as long as you go into the game knowing what you're getting into. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.